Hey folks, I thought I'd put a quick video out uh, talking about our first experience, which happened yesterday in the afternoon into the evening in the new gym that I'm taking Joe to. And oh, it couldn't have turned out more beautiful very proud. I'm a proud dad and I'm very proud of Joe and very proud of a lesson that he got to really experience straight up firsthand. I kept telling him that boxing is not, it's not the talent, it's not this, it's not that, it's not the other thing. Everything falls to him. To he who works hardest. And Joe's been working very hard. Uh, we've had a tough time here as of late, the past three weeks, uh, moving and still not in the place where we want to be, but uh, we're making do with what we have and doing what we have to do and continue through hard experiences. And that's the mark of a good champion as well. If you if you can continue and push through during hard experiences, you can get yourself through anything and you can get yourself to a championship uh, or that better job or that raise or uh, that business that you, are, you always wanted to start or anything. It's, uh, the spoils go to him who works hardest. And uh, there's some exceptions to that. You can be born with a silver spoon in your mouth and all these things, but I'm not going into all that. Uh, but for us normal folk, the spoils go to he who works hardest. And Joe got a taste of that yesterday at the gym. Uh, couldn't have had a more beautiful or better experience. Uh, we went in there. I told the trainer we're, uh, before we joined, I said, we're going to do our own thing. And uh, I told him, I know you're a great guy. I know you're a former uh, amateur and professional champion, but I've got confidence in my own abilities. And I believe right now, Joe being at 14, I'd, I'm the best available trainer for him. So I said, just let us do our thing. We'll get off to the corners and do our own thing. And uh, we won't interfere with nobody. And so that's the way we proceeded yesterday. And uh, we, you know, when you walk in a new gym, it's always some, hey, I got to get the feel of this or whatever. But I always tell Joe, Every time you go into a gym, walk in there like you own the place, you're the champion, and everybody will eventually start watching and looking at you. You quit worrying about what everybody else is doing, and you concentrate on what you're doing. And all of this lesson unfolded uh, yesterday in, in, in the gym, in, a, in the new gym. And uh, everybody stops what they're doing and starts watching Joe and what he's doing. And everybody is, from adults to older teens that are in there, everybody, the trainer that owns the gym, is just in awe of what Joe's doing. And, uh, you know, we take little video snippets, and what I do is, I video Joe doing during certain segments of certain exercises. That's why we don't put much calisthenics or any of that up because we can correct that very easily. But when it comes down to hitting the bags and doing things and moving, we do do a lot of videoing, but it's primarily for the purpose of Joe himself, not, not me, but he, because I can see the big picture, but he can't while he's doing something. And uh, he, he has the availability of going back and looking at what he may be 
uh, needs to do and what he where areas where he can improve and and whatnot. And it's a great self training aid is to video yourself and go back and look at yourself. Uh, look at you yourself, and you can easily. Uh, through comparison or what have you figure out what you're doing wrong and it'll drastically help you improve very quickly uh, It's a lot easier to, to do that than constantly watching what the other guy's doing but at any rate at the Everybody gave us our our space tremendously uh, we had a lot of eyeballs on us, but it wasn't to the point where you know, we're like, why is everybody staring at us the whole time? But we had points in time where it was like that. But when we finished and I, I was putting Joe's gloves and uh, wraps and things, towel and whatnot, back in his bag, that's when folks started coming up and they're, how old are you, Joe? Uh, well, they're like, dude, you are just like... Uh, a 17 year old Mike Tyson. We've got a lot of videotape on him at 16, 17, 18 years old. And dude, you're, you're, you just like him. And Joe's, hey, I'm, and I'm 14. And everybody's just shocked. So I told Joe, I said, this is only because you work harder than anybody at 14. You're a hard worker. God's gift you, gifted you with uh, size, weight, and height in a good way, but everything's boiling down to what you're doing with uh, what God gifted you with. And you could be a 118 pounder, 120 pounder, and uh, you you'd still be looking great because you're working so hard and it boils down to the work. So we're in this new gym. Everything's going great. Uh, went through a selection of gyms before I settled on this one. Uh, in the area where we are, there's a lot of gyms. However, uh, we are going to go to two gyms because the other gym that we're going to go to, Joe will be competing through that gym, but not practicing there daily. Uh, but uh, that's the team he's going to sign up for the state that we're in. And here in Columbia, the the uh, there everything's segmented into state league teams in boxing and it's controlled very well so we're looking forward to that and the other gym we go to will be for competing uh, but even the former professional and amateur champion trainer at the gym that we're going to do 90% or more of our training in, he was just literally shocked. And he's like, boy, you've done an excellent job with your son and you don't need to be changing nothing. You know, so uh, we're just elated with that. You know? uh, all of that has worked out perfect. Uh, and it's just due to hard work. And we, there's 101 things we need to improve upon. And when we, when we get the 101st thing down pat, we'll have 102 things to be working on. It's a never-ending process. And we're so raw right now, it's unbelievable. We got to really get things down pat. And got a lot of improvements to make. We know that. And... Uh, but everything's just very wonderful at this point. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch on very quickly is this. And I'm paraphrasing, but I'm paraphrasing Mike Tyson because he put it best. 
Mike Tyson I've seen in several interviews uh, him talking about people are getting way too comfortable offending other people online without getting punched in the face for it. And folks, have some decency about yourself, especially the people in the boxing community. Uh, this is a sport you don't play at. Uh, we, uh, where Joe goes and I go too to get all our fight breakdown material, uh, this guy's the best in the business. I'm not going to mention his name because I haven't asked him. Uh, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I did mention his name. So you can figure out who he is because I'm subscribed to him on YouTube. But here's how this can work out for you. Uh, you can be terribly ugly online to somebody. And here's how it worked out with somebody being really ugly to him. Uh, someone was giving him a hard time. And uh, you can hear my, our German Shepherd Rocky in the background. He's guarding against something. Uh, but you can be ugly online. And this, is, this could be a result for you. It could be a result for me. It could be a result for anybody. Well, this gentleman that breaks down these fights, and he is one of the better people in the world at breaking down and analyzing boxing fights. He got so offended, he went out of the town where he was at and into the other state and videoed him, video, had himself videotaped going into the gym where this guy works and hunting this boy down. And that boy wisely got the heck up out of from the gym from where, where he worked and as a trainer. He wisely got out of there. So our friend waited and got a hotel room and went back the next day because the gym owner said, oh, well, he'll be back in here at 4 o'clock tomorrow. So this guy's like, well, maybe he's got some, I know what he's thinking. He didn't say this, but he's thinking, well, maybe he's got some muscle with him or whatever, but I don't care. I'm going to confront him and he can get in the ring with me. We can settle it like men. And of course, you know, the gym loses a trainer. The guy ain't never going to go back there. He's lost all credibility with the guys he trained for being a big mouth and a, being offendful and being ugly online. So, word of caution, everybody, just be nice, you know. Uh, boxing fans can be like ravenous wolves sometimes. We got people we love and we got people we don't love. Or ones we like, ones we don't like. But you got to respect everybody that gets up in a boxing ring. It's, it's the only sport you don't play. You can't play boxing. You know, you can play football, you can play basketball. Uh, Joe has a great uncle that uh, played Major League Baseball for the Angels when they were originally in Los Angeles and the Chicago Cubs and the San Diego Padres. Joe's got a cousin that some years ago uh, played for the Montreal Expos when they had the team there. Uh, you, you, uh, you can... You can play a lot of stuff, but you can't play boxing. It's a serious, serious uh, endeavor. So just be nice. You know, and we all need to be nice. And I think a lot of times people need to tell me, hey, man, be nice. Jim, be nice. Or that's uncalled for. And sometimes I do put a statement up or a comment. And if I get called down for it and if somebody says, hey, Man, you, that's ugly. Don't do that. I'll get rid of it. Delete it down. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, that really get out of line, and we need to call each other down on that. We need to back each other up on those things uh, with concerns to that. 
most of these things I see coming from are coming from the guys that they go out in the gym up and they're typically white guys. Uh, I'm not getting this out of the African Americans, but it is, I'm getting it out of white Americans. Uh, but boy, they just step in. The boy, they know everything. They've ha had no champions. Uh, but boy, they'll come in, jump all over you. You can't do that. You can't do that. I'm like, dude, get your fanny in a, keep your fanny in the boxing academy. Where no academy mess going on up around here. Uh, we're not one size fits all, and the sport of boxing is not one size fits all. So a lot of people need to grow up, be nice, and uh, uh, what this world needs more than anything is, is love and uh, kindness. There's enough hell and misery and hatefulness to go around for all of us. So prayers to all. Everybody, good vibes to you, love to you, uh, and God's blessing. Uh, I pray God's speed for everybody and uh, nothing but love in up around here from my son Joe and I. And we thank you so much for watching our channel and uh, like and subscribe if you uh care to see any more or what have you and we just appreciate everybody everybody that's helping us grow in many many different ways and we really appreciate the plethora of great advice that we have gotten from from so many people that are just so knowledgeable in the sport and we're just very thankful god bless you and everybody have a good day. Thank you so much for watching this video.